Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare. A little bit of a rough day today. Not much sleep last night. And had to be up for a very early morning appointment in the next city over. Had to drive there in rush hour traffic. Took an hour to get there. Ah, shoo. So I wasn't able to keep the pace that I've been keeping for the last month or so, or longer, where I chant and read in the morning. I couldn't do that today. So it's six six thirty at night here. I'm finally getting back into being able to read and chant after a very hectic day. But I I was just listening to an account of the life of Jagannath Das Babaji, who was a very elevated uh, Vaishnava. He did similar austerities to Gorkhishore, just Babaji. Um, that's what Babaji's do, is they chant a lot. They're very austere, minimize all their necessities, and chant. So one thing um, Jagannath Babaji would do is chant continually, without stopping for food or sleeping or anything, really. It's hard to imagine I mean, what if he had to, like, you know, pass through a urine or something. I, no, he continued chanting continuously for three days. No food, no sleeping, not doing anything else, just chanting the mantra. He wanted to perfect the chanting. That was one thing that he would do. So in this account, evidently he was instructing others about good times to chant. He was asked, what's the best time to chant? And he said, early morning. And then he also said, from 7 at night to 11 at night is an auspicious time to chant. First time I heard that. But I end up chanting the bunk of my rounds right around that time. And the reason he gave, if I've got this right, is because Lord Shiva is out and about at that time, kind of seeing what the devotees are doing, making sure that they're it's kind of out there observing, making sure the devotees are fixing their mind on Krishna. So that was a little reassuring. It's the first time I'd heard Hare Krishna dance. First time I'd heard that I'd always heard, you know, an hour before sunrise during the Brahma Murta is the best time to chant, and it is, certainly. But according to Jagannath Das Babaji, there's another auspicious time, and that's in the evening from 7 to 11. How do you like that? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, I'm going to finish this round and read a little bit from the Ramayan. Sri Ram Jai Ram. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Everything's gonna be finished. 
everyone we know is going to pass away. Everyone's going to die. <laughs> Most of the people that I knew have already died, for lack of a better word. The body's finished. It's all going to go. I'm going to go. And whoever's watching this, you're going to go too. There's no permanence here. <clears throat> so we don't waste time getting too caught up in the temporary relationships, the temporary efforts at building things. I mean, we do it as we do, because you have to have something to do, so you do. But to keep always keep that higher understanding it's going to be finished. It's like building something in sand. Hare Krishna. But by fixing the mind on the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, His name, His form, His activities, His pastimes, They don't have a beginning or an end. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. We become attracted to the name, the form, the pastimes of the Lord. We become spiritualized. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. To know the difference between spirit and matter. Krishna. Jai Shila Prabhupada. Prabhupada's given us everything. Even civilized human life. And it's amazing that he was able to establish it given such crude individuals to work with. He's made a beautiful tree that's blossoming from some very crude rootstock. <laughs> Truly a miracle. Thank you, Krishna. He said it would take three generations. So we're working on the third generation now. They're just little. But they're here. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram 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 Sita 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 Ram Hare Krishna. 
Krishna, Krishna. This is chapter three in this condensed version of the Ramayana. And uh, we were reading yesterday about Vishramrita, who was a king that tried to get a very valuable uh, Sarabhika, Kamandanu, I think. What's the name? A Vish, uh, Vishishta was a very powerful sage, and he had a, a, like a magic cow. And the king wanted to take it away from him, claiming that the best of everything should be given to the king. But really, he had no business doing that. And so there was a lot of confrontation, and each time Vishramita tried to make himself more powerful by austerities, Vashishta was always more powerful than him because he was a Brahma Rishi. And Vishramrita even um, managed to get to the point of Raja Rishi with magic weapons. Couldn't defeat Vashishta. So then, if you can't beat him, join him. So then Vishramrita became determined. No more king stuff. What's the use of it? There's something more powerful than being a king. It's a Brahma Rishi. I'm going to perform austerities like no one's ever seen before. And I'm going to become a Brahma Rishi at least equal to Vishishta. And he did. So that was who arrived unexpectedly at um, the ceremonies that Dasarath was performing um, for his newborn children, I believe. Anyway, he showed up at King Dasarath's house, uh, his palace, un unexpected, unannounced. Surprise! Vishwamrita is here. Um, they seem to do that, these powerful sages. They just show up. <laughs> You're supposed to be prepared for them. <clears throat> So we're hearing a little bit about some of the activities of uh, Vishramrita. So this is chapter 3, it's entitled Trishanku. So right after um, Vishramrita, it's a little confusing because there's Vashishta, Vishramrita, there's a lot of these in there. But right after Vishramrita became determined to attain to the status of Brahma Rishi, so this is where this chapter begins. That was the time when the famous king of the solar dynasty, Trishanku, was reigning, who was so much in love with the beauty of his body that he could not bear the thought of parting with it at death and desired to attend to heaven in that same body. Vashishta, his preceptor, his uh, counselor, his guide, his spiritual master, whom he approached for help in realizing his wish, advised him, give up attempting the impossible. Dissatisfied with Vashishta's response, the king approached the sage's sons and sought their help. They didn't want to um, do something which their father had pronounced impossible and ridiculed his vanity and curtly bade him be gone. King Trishanku would not give up his aim and told them that since they and their father were too poor in merit to help him, he would find others who were richer. Vasista's sons were provoked beyond endurance and said, become a Chandala. They cursed him to become a dog ear, a Chandala. The curse began to act. And next morning, Trishanku woke up, a different person altogether, an untouchable, ugly of form, attired in dirty clothes. His ministers and people could not recognize him. 
They drove him out of his kingdom. He wandered hungry and weary, almost to death, till his destiny took him to guess who? Vishvamrita's ashram. <laughs> the king's appearance moved the heart of the sage who, who inquired, Aren't you King Trishanku? What has brought you to this plight? Whose curse? Recounting all that had happened, he fell at the sage's feet and said, I have been a good king and never swerved from the path of Dharma. I have committed no sin and wronged none. My preceptor and his sons have deserted me and cursed me, and you see me thus before you. Vishramrita took pity on the king, converted by a curse into a chandala. This was Vishramrita's great weakness. He was impulsive and easily overpowered by emotions like anger, sympathy, and love. In sweet words, he made the king happy. O oh, king, I have heard of your righteous rule. I offer you refuge. Be not afraid. I will arrange for the sacrifice that will enable you to enter heaven in your own body. And in this very chandala form, you shall reach heaven despite your guru's curse. Or this, of this you may be sure. He made arrangements for a great and unprecedented yagna. Vishwamrita directed his disciples to invite all the sages and their disciples for the proposed yagna. Afraid of saying no to what was more or less a command, all the rishis agreed to be present. But the sons of Vashista declined the invitation and made merry about a yagna at which the officiating priest was once upon a time a chatriya and the yajiman a stinking chandala. <laughs> yes, that is pretty funny. <clears throat> this reply, duly conveyed, enraged Vishwamrita, who exploded into a curse that Fashista's sons die and reborn for seven generations in a tribe giving to eating dog's flesh. So now he's cursing and counter-cursing. This goes on in Mahabharata too. It's like cursing and counter-cursing. The sage Vishamrita then began the yagna, extolling Trishanku's eminent virtues. Vishamrita sought the help of the other rishis in effecting the bodily transformation translation of Trishanku to heaven. While aware of the sage's mighty powers and voluminous temper, the invitees lent their support and the yagna went on. It reached the stage when the gods were invoked to descend and accept the offerings. But no god came. It was clear that Vishwamrita's yagna was a failure. And the rishis who had attended the ceremony laughed within themselves at Vishwamrita's discomfiture. Wild with rage, Vishwamrita held the ladle of ghee over the flames and said, O oh, Trishanku, here behold my power. I now transfer for your benefit all the merit I have earned. If my austerities have any value, they should lift you to heaven in your physical frame. I care not if the devas reject my offerings. King Trishanku, ascend. A miracle followed. To the astonishment of those assembled, Trishanku, in his chandala body, rose heavenward. The world saw the power of Vishramita's tapas. Trishanku reached Swarga. Swarga is not actually like one of the heavenly planets. It's like on the way to the heavenly planets from what I understand. So Trishanku reached Swarga. But Indra forthwith, 
forthwith pushed him down, saying, Who are you, entering heaven with a chandala body? You fool that earned the curse of your preceptor. Go down again. Trishanku fell down from heaven, head downward, screaming, Vishramrita, save me! <laughs> Vishramrita, seeing this, was beside himself with rage. Determined to teach the gods a lesson, he shouted to Sri Shanku, Stop there! Stop there! And to the amazement of all, Sri Shanku's earthward descent came to an abrupt stop, and he stopped in midair, shining like a star. Like a second Brahma, Vishwamrita proceeded to create a new starry horizon to the south, as well as a new Indra and new Devas. He created another universe. Alarmed at the supremacy, the Devas now came to terms and humbly entreated Vishwamrita to desist. They said, Let Trishanku stay where he is at present. Let the other stars of your creation shine forever, like your own fame and honor. Control your anger and be friends with us. Gratified at, at this submission and as easily appeased as provoked, Vishwamrita baited his creative process. Stop. But his stupendous activities had consumed the whole of the power he had thus far acquired by his austerities. And he found he had to begin again. <clears throat> he exhausted all his <clears throat> potencies. It's like a bank account. He, he was bankrupt now. Vishramrita now proceeded westwards to Pushkar and resumed his austerities. For years, the rigorous tapas continued. But once again, as it was about to bear fruit, something happened to arouse his anger. And he lost his balance and cursed his own sons. Soon recovering himself, he firmly resolved never again to yield to anger and resumed his tapas. After many years of austerities, Brahma and the Devas appeared before him and said, O Koshika, your tapas has borne fruit. You are no longer in the ranks of the kings. You have become a real Rishi. Having Thus blessed Vishwamrita, <clears throat> Brahma returned. It, it, looking at this, just looking at it, it appears that when he became determined to control his anger, that's when he got the blessings of the demigods and the other uh, sages. <clears throat> So, having thus blessed Vishramrita, Brahma returned. This was again a disappointment. He wanted to become a Brahma Rishi and Vashistha's peer, and he had only been acknowledged as an ordinary Rishi. <laughs> it was recognition as futile as the missiles of power which Vasistha's Brahma Danda had swallowed. He therefore decided to go on with his tapas, making it even more severe than ever before. The Devas did not like this. They sent the heavenly damsel, Menika, to tempt him with her celestial beauty and allurements. She went to Pushkar, where Vishwamrita was undergoing austerities, and played to catch his eye with a hundred wiles of charm and grace. Vishwamrita saw her and was fascinated by her beauty. His vow was broken. He spent ten years in a dream of joy, forgetful of his high resolve. 
Awakening at last, he looked at the trembling Menica sorrowfully and said, he would not curse her, for it was his own folly and not her fault. As in tempting him, she was only carrying out the orders of her master. <clears throat> so he controlled his anger. Good for you, Vishwamitra. Sadly, he wended his way to the Himalayas to resume his broken tapas. You know, we think we have a journey. <laughs> oh, look what he's gone through. And that's just to become powerful. Not even devotional, just powerful. Oh no. For a thousand years, controlling his senses, he performed rigorous tapas. At the request of the Davis, Brahma appeared before Vishwamrita and spoke to him sweetly. I welcome you as a Maharishi, my son. Pleased with your soulful tapas, I confer you on that title and the sanctity it imports. So now he's, he's earned the rank of Maharishi. He wants Brahma Rishi. He's got now. He's got. He first he was an ordinary Rishi. Now he's Maharishi. Unmoved alike by gratification or disappointment, Vishwamitra folded his hands in adoration and asked the Father of the Universe if the boon meant conquest over the senses. <clears throat> By no means, said the Creator, Brahma, but strive to subjugate the senses, tiger among munis. <clears throat> so he conquered anger, now he's going to conquer his senses. Resolved on the supreme conquest, Vishwamrita entered another thousand years of even harder tapas which threw the devas into even greater consternation. Indra called unto him the celestial damsel Ramba and enjoined on her as a vital service to the devas to employ all her art to bring Vishwamrita under the spell of her charm and divert him from his purpose. So he knows he has to control his senses. Now he's going to get tested. She was afraid, but Indra assured her that he would not, she would not be left alone, but be accompanied by the God of love, and the spirit of springtime would be with her for support. Unwillingly, she went, and as she entered the precincts of the hermitage, the forest blossomed into vernal beauty and the south wind blew gently laden with the scent of flowers, and coquillas burst into song. Love and spring were both there to assist beauty. Disturbed by the stirrings to which he had long been a stranger, Vishwamrita opened his eyes and saw a smiling damsel of surpassing beauty who seemed the very soul of the spring with its flowers and fragrance and song. At this vision of soft voluptuousness, a white heat of anger surged through him as he recognized in it another temptation thrown in his way by the envious gods, and he cursed the temptress. O oh, Ramba, for seeking to tempt me whom I am striving to conquer anger and desire, be thou frozen to an image of stone for ten thousand years. But this explosion of rage made him see how far he was from the fulfillment of his purpose. <clears throat> and sadly, he quitted the Himalayan forest and sought the solitude of the East. <clears throat> there, he restrained his breathing, gave up all thought of the things of the world, and performed austerities so stern that smoke and flames issued from his body and enveloped the universe. Then, at the prayer of the panic-stricken panic gods, Brahma again appeared before him and hailed him as Brahma Rishi. All hail Brahma Rishi, 
I'm pleased with you. Blessed be your life. Vishwamrita was happy. But humbly he said, How can I be happy unless my Vashistha's lips I hear that I am a Brahma Rishi? So I have to hear it from Vashistha. Vashistha smiled, remembering his fight with Vishwamrita, and said to him, You have achieved the fruit of your great austerities. Indeed, you are a Brahma Rishi, my brother. <laughs> it was joy all around. And this was the story of the sage that arrived suddenly at Dasaraj's court. <laughs> so we're going to find out what happens because Lord Ramachandra is going to appear there. And here's this. So we get a little background on this personality, Vishramrita. <laughs> Krishna, yes, you have to become absorbed in relishing these transcendental pastimes and activities. Then we'll become Brahma Rishis. <laughs> Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> 